If you're looking to boost your Mutt team or make some money by selling coins, check out MobileMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID at checkout for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on, guys? Clickwood here, back again, bringing you guys another Madden 17 ratings reveal video. And guys, today, what we're going to be taking a look at is outside linebackers. Now, we're going to be taking a look at the top five guys at the position. Outside linebacker, of course, one of those positions that uh, it kind of takes different skill sets into account. There are guys who are 4-3 outside linebackers and 3-4 outside linebackers. And there are guys that play, you know, different positions even within just those base frames of defenses. So keep all of that in mind because what you might see on some of these player attributes is a little bit different than what you might see on others. Their skill sets are a little bit different. So just keep that stuff in mind as we're going through this. And another thing, guys, that I want to point out here. It's important to remember that the attributes that you're taking a look at here are not their ultimate team ratings, so they're not going to be the ones that we see within Mutt to start the season. We do probably assume, like usual, that, of course, these guys are probably going to be the top five players at the position to start the year in Mutt as well, but we don't know that for sure. So we'll have to take a look at what they do with their Mutt ratings as the season goes on, and especially at the beginning of the year. Now, with that being said, guys, Let's hop right into it. We're going to be taking a look at the top five outside linebackers. Starting off at number five, New England Patriots, Donta Hightower. Definitely one of the most versatile players in the league on the defensive side of the football. I mean, this guy can do it all. You take a look at his attributes. He's a 90 overall, which is very good, of course. And he combines all of that with an 83 speed, an 88 acceleration, 88 power move, 89 for pursuit, and an 87 for play recognition. So he's got a lot of interesting things here because not only is he decently quick, he's not the fastest guy in the game, but decently quick. 88 acceleration is very good as well, but his power move being an 88 makes it so that he can actually go after the quarterback if he needs to as well, which is something that a lot of these guys that play in a 4-3 set are not typically able to do as well. So the thing that's really cool about Dante Hightower is that versatility that he has because you can play him outside, you can kick him to the inside if you need to on like a dime coverage or a nickel coverage where you might only have two linebackers on the field. He can certainly play either of those positions. He can also potentially go and play on the defensive line. So there's so much that you can do with him. He's a really great player to start the season off. Um, nice to see him getting some respect in, in the game. And uh, definitely, again, another guy who's going to combine with Jamie Collins as making one of the best duos for linebackers in the game. Now, let's move on to number four, and we've got Pernell McPhee. Now, per Pernell McPhee is a guy who kind of broke out this past season, definitely looked very good. But his attributes are kind of interesting here because I I'm not exactly sure that he's best suited to even play linebacker, to be completely honest with you. Like, if you look at his attributes, 76 speed, that is terrible. Now, again, we're not saying that Pernell McPhee is terrible, but his attribute being a 76, that is not good. I, I need somebody to have, I mean, at the bare minimum, 80 speed for a linebacker. Like, he's not even really close to 80 speed, to be honest with you. But the other attributes that he has are so good. You take a look at 92 for strength, 94 block shedding. He's going to be able to play the run really well. And he has great power move at a 97 with still an acceptable, actually a pretty good finesse move being an 88 as well. So that makes him 92 overall. This is a guy who definitely can get after the quarterback, but he's lacking that speed. So the thing that I have with, the problem that I have with Pernell McPhee is that he's basically exclusively a pass rusher. I would not want him in coverage whatsoever, even dropping back like, just occasionally. I, I would not want it just because he's such a detriment with that 76 speed. But if you were to put him as a defensive lineman, now you're talking about an elite pass rusher because that 76 speed, while it's still somewhat of a problem, it's not anywhere near as big of a problem when you have him on the D-line. So again, I like Pernell McPhee. I think he's a good player. He's got 92 overall here. So I mean, he's, he's still a good overall player, but make sure that you use him correctly if you're using the Bears. Now on to number three, and this is one that I talked about the other day for defensive end, and I kind of thought this might be what they ended up doing. Khalil Mack, 94 overall. They have him listed as a left outside linebacker, and we'll get into that, but let's take a look at his attributes here. 87 speed, 89 acceleration, 98 power move with an 88 finesse move and a 93 block shed. 
Now, this is more like it. Okay, <laughs> this is more like it. You take a look at what you had with Pernell McPhee, and you basically have all of the same attributes that Pernell McPhee had, maybe just a little bit lower uh, for the strength. Obviously, we don't see Khalil Mack's strength, but we have to assume that he's still going to be pretty decent in that department. Um, the His power move is actually better. They have the same finesse move, and their block shedding is basically the same as well. But you take a look at that speed difference. Whereas Pernell McPhee was only a 76 speed, Khalil Mack is an 87 speed. You can put him anywhere on the field, and that's what Khalil Mack does for the Raiders. This guy plays everywhere, man. Defensive end, he can play uh, linebacker as well, obviously, where they have him listed as a left outside linebacker. Now, the thing that I want to point out here is that Khalil Mack was actually elected as the first ever player to be the first team All-Pro at two different positions last year. He was listed as a first-team All-Pro for both defensive end and outside linebacker. He split his snaps fairly evenly at those positions, but he actually played defensive end more than he played uh, outside linebacker. 467 snaps at defensive end, 439 snaps at outside linebacker, according to ESPN Stats and Info. So again... He actually played more at defensive end. Now, I understand that the Raiders might call him a certain position or, or whatever, but the reality is he was elected as a first-team All-Pro for a defensive end position as well, and he was also a pro bowler as a defensive end. So keep all of that in mind. I personally think he should have been listed as a defensive end, but either way, the, the big thing is that he has a great player attribute. I mean, he is an absolute freaking monster. He was one of the favorites for Mutt last year, and I imagine that that's going to be the case again this year. He's freaking amazing. We don't know what his coverage attributes are, but I mean, he was good enough last year to be acceptable in coverage, and especially if you user control him, he can be real, real nasty. So definitely love Khalil Mack. He's a very fun player to have on your team. I don't know that a lot of people are going to be using the Raiders, maybe other than in a franchise mode. I don't think a lot of people are going to go out there and, and select them as their standard team to use for a head-to-head -head game. But, I mean, those guys are getting a lot better on offense, and defensively they're making improvements as well. So it's a possibility anyway. Now let's move on to number two, and we've got Justin Houston of the Kansas City Chiefs, one of the best pass rushers in the game. Absolute monster attributes here with a 98 power move and a 91 finesse move. That is a ridiculous combination, guys. Seriously, he is a freaking monster. 93 block shedding as well. You take a look at the 83 speed and 86 acceleration. Definitely good enough to be valuable at all of those things. Um, you know, 83 speed isn't elite, but it's definitely good enough to get after the quarterback. And really, that's what Justin Houston's there for. He's not going to be a guy you want to drop back into coverage too often. But again, you set him on that edge, and whether you put him at D end or at linebacker, he's going to get after the quarterback. So again, Justin Houston, big time player for the Kansas City Chiefs, 97 overall. Very, very nice attributes to start the year. But the number one guy, left outside linebacker for the Denver Broncos, Von Miller, absolutely terrorizing opposing quarterbacks this past season. I mean, this dude was ridiculous. Definitely the best pass rusher in the league. I mean, you guys can make your arguments if you want below, but in my opinion, I don't think there's any question. Von Miller is the best pass rusher in the league right now, and his attributes show it, man. 87 speed, 89 acceleration with a 92 power move and a 98 finesse move. You want to talk about getting after the quarterback? I mean, these are mutt attributes. These are like the attributes that you would get for a card like midway through the mutt season and be like, holy crap, this card's amazing. This guy is the base attributes that you have in the game. So, I mean, he's like a, a 99 overall mutt card going up against like standard elite players in Mutt at the beginning of the year. So you can see the type of damage that he can potentially do. He also has a 95 for block shedding, so he can play against the, the, the run as well. So, I mean, definitely an amazing player. Von Miller, The I think he's pretty much unquestioned as the best outside linebacker. If you take a look at his attributes that he's had throughout the couple of seasons here, the past few seasons, uh, at least in Mutt, he's gotten pretty decent respect throughout the year as far as his coverage attributes go. Uh, not really anything amazing, but acceptable anyway for a guy who's primarily a pass rusher. So again, 
Von Miller, in my opinion, the best defensive end slash linebacker in this game. I personally like to put him at DN, but, you know, to each his own. My, I mean, again, my personal opinion is uh, I play a lot of 4-3, so you're going to see me typically kind of gravitate toward the guys that are better co in coverage and against the run than the pure pass rushers as far as linebackers go. And I like to take my linebackers then and put them at defensive end. My Von Millers, my Khalil Max, those guys. And I would drop them into coverage too. I'm sending a blitz from the left side. I might take my other guy and drop him into coverage, for example, just to kind of throw off the defense. And that way you still got a guy like Von Miller playing from your defensive line who can step back and make plays in coverage as well. So just something to think about anyway, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, do me a favor, drop a like on it. I think they did a pretty good job with the top five here for outside linebackers. Um, there are a couple guys who I think should probably be on here, but I want to hear from you guys. Let me know in the comments section below who missed this list that should be on it and which one of these guys is on the list that probably shouldn't be. Let me know in the comments section below. Don't just say one or the other. You got to let me know. If you're taking, if you're adding one, you got to let me know who's got to come off. Because if you're saying, you know, one guy is better and he should be in the top five, well, that means one of these guys can't be on here then. So which one is it? Let me know in the comments section below. Thanks again, guys. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.